Recently, we've posted some videos talking about the value of the RTXR TOS platform with Ethercat, and you can get those from our website. Today, we're actually here to see the platform in action. So, what I'm going to go over is actually some hardware that's here on this desktop. And although this might be a very small example, a desktop example, this definitely, hopefully, you can extrapolate this into something larger, probably in your own facilities or your own labs. So, let me go ahead and get started. So, starting over here. Here. here we have a standard processor. This is actually a multi-core x86, so it's a dual-core motherboard. And so one of the things of, of the RTX RTOS platform is it doesn't require any proprietary hardware. So this is actually a very small chassis. There's no additional plug-in cards required. Everything is running on the x86 cores. And so inside of this uh, as far as PC, we actually have several things loaded. First of all, we have Microsoft Windows 7. So on top of that, we have RTX, and RTX transforms Windows into a real-time operating system. On top of that as well, we have the EtherCAT software. So there's the actual SDK, and there's something called the EtherCAT configurator, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about later. So all of that is actually what's loaded on the PC. And again, there's no proprietary hardware inside of here. It's all using standard uh, commercial off-the-shelf hardware. On that note, when it comes to communications, we're actually using the standard onboard NIC. So again, built-in nothing proprietary for communications in our case it's a it's a real tech 8169 nick that's there so let's move outside of the pc so if you see here, one of the benefits of EtherCAT is that we're able to use standard Ethernet hardware. So there's no proprietary cabling. This is just a simple CAT5 cable coming out of the PC and into the input port right here of our first, first EtherCAT module. So we have one cable coming here. Here we have just a couple input and output modules. EtherCAT is very expandable. This eBus can actually be expanded up to like 65,000 nodes, so it can definitely scale to some very large applications. Here we just have a couple just for this desktop example. And then if you look here, there's actually an output cable as well. So all EtherCAT, they always have an input and output. Here's the output, and you can see this single, again, CAT5 cable is now going to this Yaskawa drive right here. So this is actually, you know, single drive. Your application could maybe have tens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of drives. So again, hopefully you can get this and extrapolate it into your own example. So uh, one of the big benefits not only with EtherCAT is being able to use the standard CAT5, but one thing you should know is safety is integrated into this bus. So not only is this a fantastic real-time communications bus, but it's also a dedicated safety bus as well because there's actually dedicated channels to pass the safety messages you know, from your controller all the way down to your motors and slaves. So everything is integrated on a single CAT5 cable. Okay, so here coming back to the drive, just uh, finishing up here. So here's the Yaskawa drive, and then we have cabling coming down to our servo motor down there. Okay, so in just uh, finishing up, is, is this is just a 24 volt power supply providing power to the EtherCAT modules here as well. Okay, so this is actually kind of the full layout here, and in a minute I'll talk about how we actually can get this motor spinning and running some of the CAN demos that come with the SDKs. So to actually get a, a motion demo working, we're going to actually get the servo motor spinning. There's several steps that are involved. Everything from configuring the EtherCAT network to opening and looking at the source code to actually configuring the parameters of the demo. So I'm going to walk you through these six steps. So before we get started, let's just take an overview again. So here's actually just a representation of the desktop lab that we saw a minute ago. We have the industrial PC. We actually have a bunch of EtherCAT slaves. And here's the motor drive right here from Yaskawa. Over here is the RTX RTOS platform with EtherCAT. So we kind of briefly went over this. You've got multi-core x86 standard commercial off-the-shelf hardware here down below. Windows, you plus RTX, again RTX transforming Windows into real-time operating system. Here's the EtherCAT piece delivering real-time Ethernet and then your application is here. 
Now, the piece I want to focus on before going to step one is this thing called the Ethercat Configurator. So this configuration tool takes these slave information files from the slave manufacturers. So this XML file or ESI file is actually served as input to the configurator. And the tool queries the entire network and creates this thing called the Ethercat Network Information File. So this ENI file is the recipe that describes your entire Ethercat network. And this, this file is key because this tells the Ethercat master how to communicate to every single one of the slaves, even up to 65,000 nodes. Okay, so let's uh, look at this configuration tool. So this is the Ethercat configurator. So after you do all your installation, you'll open up this tool at the beginning. You'll actually click the button here to actually survey the entire network. So using the Cat5 cable, it will go out and query the entire Ethercat network, and then you're going to export configuration. So that ENI file will be exported, and then you save it to a location that you can remember. Okay. Step two, once you've done the configuration, now you're going to go back to RTX. So the thing we're going to do now is actually set up the driver. Remember, we're using just the onboard NIC to communicate across the Ethercat as far as uh, network. So here's where you go under the Start menu, All Programs, Interval 0, RTX 2012, and Tools. You'll find a program called RTSS Run. So once you execute that, this window will pop up, and all you're doing is you're going to point to the actual NIC driver for Ethercat. So in our case, we're using a Realtek 8169. You're going to probably maybe be using an Intel one. So all I did was set the path there, register this real-time DLL, and then hit OK. And so this actually registers the driver to be used with the Ethercat uh, master. Okay? And then step three and four, this uh, actual, actual motion demo, we provide all the source, so you can actually open it. So you'll open Visual Studio 2010. Again, Visual Studio is used for all of the development on the RTX RTOS platform. So you'll navigate to where the motion demo is, and you don't have to modify any of the code. It's actually ready to be built, and then you can run it. But it's there for you to look at. If you want to modify it, you can do that. So after you kind of glance through the code, you're just going to actually do the build. Okay. And then step five, so now that you've got an executable ready to run, the last step we're going to do is actually configure how do we want the motor to behave. So here is something as, it's an XML file called demo config. So this is provided this template and this file is actually input to the executable. So the executable is actually going to look for this file. And if you see here, there's some things you need to set up. For example, the setting up the NIC. In our case, again, it's uh, Realtek. Driver. So here's actually the name of the driver. Here's the path to remember the configurator exported an XML file, that ENI file. This is where you're going to put the path to get to that ENI file. Again, the recipe for the entire Ethercat network. And then finally, down below, these are the motor parameters. For example, you know how much acceleration, deceleration, how much distance traveled. So all the basic parameters just for the motor. For step six, we're actually going to run the demo. So what you're going to do is you're going to open a command window, and it's best to open it as an administrator. And then we're going to navigate to where the actual executable is. So remember earlier, we did a build under Visual Studio. The output of an RTX application is actually something that has the extension .rtss. So it doesn't have a .exe, it has a .rtss. So that's a RTX executable. So we're going to navigate to that folder, and then we're going to type this in. We're going to do RTSS run motion demo RTSS, that's the executable. And then we're going to put the path here to where the demo config file is. So remember, we, we save that from the Ethercat configurator, well, we're going to actually type the hard path here as well. Okay? And then we're just going to hit enter. So now you actually are seeing the motor spinning, and so that's actually the first step in actually running this motion demo. So we've seen the RTX RTOS platform with Ethercat in action. We got the motor spinning. So hopefully you found this video helpful, and we hope that you'll come to our website and actually look at some of the other videos that talk about the platform. And thanks for your time, and stay tuned.